Man, it feels like so long since I've done one of these 3D printing videos. Hey guys, I'm Calvin from CIR Inventions, and I recently fixed my 3D printer again. Uh, I've only had it for about five months, and I've broken it, I think, three or four times. I don't know how I did it, but I've broken it a lot, and I've had a lot of issues with it. But by solving these issues, I'm able to teach you guys how to solve the issues that I had, so maybe whenever you guys have these issues, you won't have as much trouble as I did fixing them. Now, this issue that I'm sharing today was actually quite easy for me to fix, and that's why I figured I'd make a quick video on it, just so you guys know how to do it. So, um, without further ado, I'm Calvin from CIR Inventions, and this is how to replace the hot end on your 3D printer. Now, before I do any of the work on the 3D printer, I have two things to say. One, please subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subs in the very near future. Any subscription would help, and it'd be highly appreciated if you subscribed. But second, I wanted to go over why I had to replace my hot end in the first place. You see this? This is my original hot end. It came with my printer. That gray stuff is thermal paste. This hot end, there's nothing wrong with the hot end itself, but I was trying to clean out the nozzle because it was dirty. I took out the nozzle, cleaned it out, and then I tried to screw it back in and it wouldn't screw in straight. Now, why is this? Well, this little hole where the nozzle's supposed to go, uh, I, I stripped it. So basically, I, I can't screw it in straight at all, which makes this hot end completely useless. So yeah, it was a mistake on my part, but I'm not actually sure when I stripped it. It just kind of was stripped. Not a big deal though, I got a new hot end and I'm here to show you how to replace it if you ever need to. Some other situations where you might want to replace your hot end would be if you wanted to get a different kind of hot end, like an all metal one, or the scenario like mine where your hot end stops working for any reason. But without any further ado, let's just get into it. So first of all, you're going to want the tools that came with your 3D printer. That's the really the only tools that you really need. Uh, that's not true, you also need a screwdriver, which speaking of that, I should I should go get one real fast. All right guys, I got my screwdriver right here and um, let's get started. First, we're gonna need to turn on the printer and take the filament out that's inside it. If your filament isn't in your printer, obviously you don't need to take it out right now. But I still have filament in my printer, right here. So um, let's take it out. First of all, we're gonna wanna turn on the printer like so, let it boot up. And then we're gonna go to control, temperature, nozzle. And I'm just gonna heat it up to we're going to just take it to um, 205, that should work. There we go, okay, we are at 205, you can just be within the ballpark, anything that will make your PLA melt but not burn. So I'd say between 200 and 220 is going to be a good area. So we're going to let this heat up and I will be back soon. Alright, so our printer is heated up, so we're just going to take out the filament now, it's quite easy. You just push your filament through a little bit. Get some of that out and then pull it straight out. Bada bing, bada boom, your spool is off. All right, now that our filament is out, we're just gonna let the printer cool off. We don't need it to be heated up anymore. It just makes it more dangerous. So we're just gonna go to prepare and then we can just scroll down to cool down. Now it is cooling down. Okay, my printer is cooled off to a temperature where I can actually touch the nozzle. So we're just gonna turn off the printer now. It might even cool off faster for all I know. Next, we're gonna need some of these little tools out of your tool bag. Because if you wanna to get to the hot end, well, you're gonna to have to open up the black box here. This box just has fans, pretty much just cools off your printer. No big deal, that's not the right one. Dude, these things are so hard to figure out sometimes. All right, here's the right one. Let's, uns let's unscrew this bad boy real fast. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite for not putting any thermal paste here, even though that's kind of what I say to do to stop heat creep. I'll be sure to do that. All right, now that the black box is off, what we need to do is take off the hot end. And I believe, yes, it's the same it's the same little wrench screw. I really don't know the name of this thing. <laughs> the, the, same, the same one of these little skinny unscrew things works for the black box and the hot end. There's just two really long screws and eventually you can just pull them out. You have to unscrew them a little bit and then just pull them out. Our hot end is off. We're gonna take this off right here. All right, now that that's unattached, we need to remove the rest of the hot end. Now, that's where our screwdriver comes in. You'll see that there's this little screw right here and you just take it off. It shouldn't be too hard to take out and of course for me it is. Oh, no, there it goes. Basically the screw just holds in your wires. So it's it's pretty important, I'd say. 
it kind of helps the whole machine work. Then again, I'd say most of the screws on this thing help the machine work, so, you know, that's important. But yeah, you take this screw out. Also, make sure with all these little pieces, you have like a Petri dish, like this one I have back here, to remove everything. And one more thing. So, take off the silicone sock if you have one. And on the bottom, there is a very, very tiny grub screw right there. See that? You just need to take that off and you will be all set to take off the hot end. Just a second, I gotta get the other twisty unscrew device. This is the smallest twisty unscrew device. I really gotta figure out what these things are called. So you just take it and you take out that grub screw like so. Or you can just loosen it just a tiny bit. And what this does is it lets you take out this little metal uh, heat cylinder. <laughs> and yeah, now your hot end is completely detached unless you forgot to undo your twisty tie, like me. So that's how you take off the hot end, but this is how you put it back on. Yes, I know this is the same hot end from earlier, but I'm not trying to replace it. I'm just trying to, you know, show you how to uninstall and reinstall. First step, you're gonna wanna screw your little, what are they, coupler back in. And if you wanna see my video on couplers, click in the upper right. But um, if you want to replace your tube, you gotta screw this coupler back into here. So let's do that real fast. All you gotta do is just twist it into place. Shouldn't be terribly hard. And you don't have to tighten it down, but if you want to, you can. I usually don't, because it's not really necessary, as long as it's not popping out of place, which it's not. Our next step is to reattach the silver hot cylinder. I seriously gotta figure out the names of this stuff into your hot end. Now, you're gonna wanna take your black box here. I wanna push this right back in. Now, whenever you push in your little silver spot, the actual bar should be flush, or like the end of the bar should be flush with your actual little heating box. Next, you're gonna wanna get that really short stubby screw. And with that short stubby screw, you're going to want to insert this little, these two little wires right here. You see them? Yeah, these two tiny ones. You wanna put them back into the tiny hole that your old hot end had it in right there, like so. Now, with your screw, you get your screwdriver. See, the one that I, I took a second getting earlier. And you just screw it back in. Now, what this does is it prevents that wire from popping back out. And I'm guessing we're not gonna want that wire to pop back out. So, let's screw it back in real fast. Now, whenever you're tightening this little screw in, you're not gonna wanna make it like super snug. We're not trying to crush the wire. We're just trying to put it back. So as you can see, the wire is back in place and it does not come out when I pull on it. The last thing you wanna do to fully reattach your new hot end, or the same one in my case, is to get your tiny grub screw and reattach it. Basically, that little tiny black dot, you just screw it on back in whenever you have your silver tube nice and flush. Now you don't want to, this one you can tighten down more than the other one, but you don't have to make it super tight, it just has to hold it in place. So as you can see, that one now does not move and it is fully in place. Our last step, of course, is just to reattach the hot end with those really long screws. Okay, it's the second to last step, but it's the last step when reinstalling just the hot end. Also, if you have a silicone sock, now would be a good time just to put it on. Now, while I'm doing this tutorial, if for some reason you don't have this hot end and you just want to know where to buy it, I'll leave a link to the one, or this, this particular hot end. It comes with, I think, three new nozzles and three new, what are they called? Silicone socks. So that's pretty nice. All right, time to reattach. Basically, you just screw these back in. It's not terribly hard to figure out. And they're really pretty easy to screw in. Whenever you get one going, don't screw it in too tight, so that way, if your other long screw does not perfectly line up, you can still move your hot end just a bit. Now that they're both in, I'm just gonna tighten them both down. These should be pretty tight. And now, your new hot end is attached, woohoo. But of course, we're not done yet. We still have to reattach the fan black box thing. I really gotta figure out the name of all these parts. You gotta reattach the fan box. That's what I'm just gonna call it. Black box, fan box, whatever you want. So we're gonna get our last two screws and just put it in. This is my least favorite step by far because I'm really bad at lining up the screws and putting them in place.
Same deal with this one. You don't want to tighten this screw too tight so that way you can adjust these wires so that way they're on the inside and your other screw hole as needed. So let's put this last screw in, tighten everything down, make sure everything's working, and we will be done. And with that, we have successfully switched our hot ends. You didn't have to go into the motherboard. You didn't have to do any of that crazy stuff. It's actually pretty simple, assuming you have all the parts, of course, but it's still really not so difficult, so I thought I'd share it with you guys, and if I can do it on my own, I'm sure you can too. And that's today's video. Thank you for watching. It's actually a lot easier than you might think to replace your hot end, but if you didn't know how, then it would be really difficult. I hope this video helped whoever needed it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm Calvin from CR Inventions. Please subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.